Look at this. What I see, these are the nights when I, like when I think about my job, you know, a lot of the time you're sort of having to be with Louis or whatever, and you think, oh, <laughs> Maybe there's something better I could do in my life. And then I have moments like this where I get to sit with two people I absolutely love and admire. And Sunu, I can't believe this is your first ever late night talk show. Woo! We're so honored. Yeah. We're so honored that you chose us. No, um, how are you feeling? You feel good? Yes, of course. This is my favorite show. This is like, they asked me which show I want to be on. I was like, James Corden show. Oh, <laughs> silly, come on. We love you for that. Now, we met. We met at the Met Gala yes. last week. You told me that you'd never been to an event like that before. How did the night pan out for you? Who did you get to meet? Who did you talk to? Um, the night was so amazing. I mean, I met so many people. It was crazy to just be, like, at a place with people that I grew up watching, and it was so surreal. I met, like, Hailey Bieber. I was freaking out. And then <laughs> I met, like, Rihanna. <gasps> wow. No, what did yes. you say to Rihanna? I, I just, like, introduced myself. I was like, hi. I was, like, shaking. She's so pretty. <laughs> But, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool if you can start any introduction with, hi, I'm an Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> you immediately get people's attention, because I think performers intrinsically know. Do you, do you agree with me, Joseph? Oh, well, no, I go... Like, I don't almost ever get starstruck just because I'm a, a cynical, you know, schmuck, but to be <laughs> on a stage, honestly, with an Olympic gold medalist gymnast, especially, like, yeah. I'm, I'm seriously starstruck right it's now. It's true. Because yeah. you go, well, this is... Yeah. This is superhuman. I mean, Joseph, when you were Sunni's age, here you are, you were in third <laughs> rock from the sun. This is you here, this is you in, uh, in teen, teen Beat, <laughs> and here you are in Bop Magazine. Oh, boy. Um, Someone wow. told me to do that, okay? I didn't want to do that. <laughs> well, oh, God. Do you have a scrapbook of, of, of any of this sort of stuff from when you, you were... You think I want to keep you that? Young? You think I want to look at I that I don't know, somewhere? you might want to show your kids one day or something. No, the truth, I mean, I, I don't know, man. All those magazines always used to give me the creeps, to be honest. Like, maybe because I would be, you know, someone would be taking my picture and they'd say, put your hands together like this. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> I don't know, I just, I, I, I love acting. I love acting, but this, this is not acting. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> so you, just to be clear, you're saying that, that Bop Magazine wasn't a high point? <laughs> No, but can I just say though, because I, I, I know I'm, I'm, I just, I did gymnastics when I was a little kid. Like when no I was way. actually younger than that, I was doing gymnastics, and I always, I watched the Olympics like a lot, and like the, especially the Olymp the gymnastics events. And like I'm, I know I'm repeating myself now, but I'm just like so proud of you and so happy that you did what you did and, and represented you. us, and like you're like honestly such a hero. Thank you. It's completely true. Yeah. I think it's how everybody feels. <laughs> Were you any good? Was I any good? Were you good? any good? Yeah, why didn't you stay with it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could do some stuff. Yeah. I could, you know, I, I was mostly on the floor. You know, I could tumble. Yeah. I could do, like, you know, I could do a back handspring or things uh -huh. like that. Yeah. The only one in gymnastics I think I'm any good at is the ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> Rhythmic gymnastics. Rhythmic. Rhythmic. That's me. Hold on. I'm, I'm never going to be good with the, with, the, with the tumbles and stuff, but give me a ribbon. Oh. I don't, listen, I don't think In I... the ball. The ball is harder for me. <laughs> but the, the ribbon, look, I don't know if I'm on the podium, but I know I don't place last. <laughs> I know that for sure. I know that 100%. I mean, you started gymnastics when you were six. So yeah. Like, when did you know that you were really good? Um, when did you look around you? What age were you when you thought, oh, hang on, I think I might be able to win at the Olympics? <laughs> you know? Um... Probably when I won my first, like, big elite competition, which was, like, when I was 12. Because, like, that's where I was really, like, oh, wow, like, I could actually kind of be good. Like, I was on the top of the podium with, like, the rest of the girls. And it was just so... I don't know, you don't think about it like that. Like, I was just having fun with it. Was there ever a moment where people said to you, no, no, you're going to go to the Olympics and I think you've got a chance at winning? Um, a lot of... Yeah, a lot of people would say that, but I would never listen. Like, I like to prove myself wrong. No. I mean, when you did win, I just love that you said I was having fun with it. That's yeah. I love hearing that. That's where I'd be. I think that's the most important thing whenever you're doing something that you love, because, like in elite gymnastics, that can get taken away from you. And th the most important thing was for me to have fun. But I, th I think it's just uh, when I watch the gymnastics, I just think, well, how do you get into doing it for the first time? Hmm. Like when you're like, <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Why wouldn't you want to just like roll around the ground and like flip and stuff and fly? Like, that's yeah, what I no. thought about. Like. <laughs> But that's why I just don't like. I'd be so terrified 
of the of what would inevitably happen, which is I would break a limb, no question, no, <laughs> um, no, not not a chance that I do, that I don't, you know. Yeah. But I think that would. Look... <laughs> <laughs> so when you win the gold, mm -hmm. how did you celebrate this gold medal win, and how soon after the update did you just start referring to yourself on social media or anything as Olympic gold medalist Suni Lee? Like, how long does it take? Uh, see, that one was hard because we were in. A... Different times when I was like, I don't want to spoil it, but I'm also like, I really want to just put it in my bio so people can see it. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to wait. I had to wait a little bit. But the most important thing, what did I do to celebrate? Oh, I had pizza. Mm. How yeah. quickly after you had won gold did that pizza get into your hand? Right away. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. No. Really? Because I, I was talking to Annie, and she's like our mom. She's like the mom of the team. And it was literally the only thing getting me through the competition. I was like, Annie, I'm so hungry. Like, do I get a pizza if I do good? And she's like, yeah, only if you do good. It's very similar to the way I work at this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joseph, let's talk about your brilliant new show, Mr. Corman. Now, you... Oh, it's a real yeah. achievement. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> can I... Can I not that I want this entire show to just become some kind of universal loving, but I don't mind if it does. You've been on the show a few times. I'm always very, very fond of you, but I find myself like being incredibly proud of you for what you've achieved here because oh, you wrote this show, you directed this show, produced this show, and you star in the show, which is an amazing thing. And I can remember the first time you were here, you were saying, I'm really going to start trying to direct things, and that's a mm. thing that lots of actors say and never really see it through. It's an, it's an incredible achievement. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what the show is about and, and who you play in. Thank you. Sure, yeah, it's, it's about a guy who's, you know, arrived at a certain age as I have and is thinking about his life, and it didn't all go exactly how he thought it was going to go, and that can be sad. It can also be funny if you have a certain kind of sense of humor, which I guess I do. And, uh, you know, so in, in that way, I think it's like all of us. All of us go through life, and it never goes exactly how you think it's going to go. And, um, you know, that's, that's being a human being. So. Um, he, you, Mr. Corman is, is a teacher mm -hmm. in, the, in the show. Did you have a teacher in your life that meant a lot to you when you were growing up? Was that someone you thought about while you were writing it? Yeah, you know, um, I was just thinking about, because I was like, oh, I did gymnastics. We were talking about gymnastics. Mm -hmm. I had a gymnastics teacher that I definitely remember. I've had a number of great teachers. I think teachers, by the way, are heroes. Yeah. Heroes. Yeah. Yes. But um, they can have so much impact on, on students. And um, yeah, I remember my gymnastics teacher. I had two I remember, Greg and Sean. And the thing I remember Sean always used to say was, it's only pain, it's only pain. And we'd be like sitting there, you're like doing push-ups or like trying to do the splits or stretch and you know, and it's hard. And he would just be like, it's only pain. And what that meant was, I mean, he was teaching us a lesson. We were young at the time, but he was saying, it's like, your mind can overcome anything. And like, yeah. that's the kind of lesson that a teacher can impart even on a young kid. So what's up, Sean? 